Hello and welcome to a special presentation of For Your Consideration. I'm Mike Josic. And I'm Dustin Friesenan. Thanks for joining us. So this episode is going to be a little bit different from what you might be used to. Instead of talking about masterpieces or museum pieces, classics or not classics, we're actually going to talk about just movies that we've seen, movies that we thought were kind of interesting, that we just wanted to recommend. Movies that might be hidden gems that we think others should see and maybe that could be classics of one way or another. And also it's just an excuse to talk about movies that aren't kind of strictly defined by these top 100 lists and critics greatest lists. There's so many movies that we watch kind of on a regular basis so let's just break out of the mold a little bit, think outside the box. So what we're going to do here is each of us are going to come to the table with two or three movies and we're going to throw out our thoughts about them, maybe have a brief discussion and then we'll wrap things up and that'll be the end of it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And this time we'll have Mike start, since I always start. It's all about turning things on their head. That's right. Well, the first movie I wanted to talk about, a lot of people have probably seen it already, but I had a chance to see the Key and Peel comedy, Keanu. Yeah! Crazy drug dealers got Keanu. Oh, boy. Let's go. If you touch one hair on my cat's head! <laughs> Never mind. Keanu with the door. I kind of went in with high expectations and I think the movie, I think it tries really hard. I think it succeeds in a lot of ways, but it really does have this big chunk of the middle where it gets so far into a joke that it can't get out of it again. And it really slows down the pacing and they've got a few jokes like that where they, they really, they really decide to get into the nitty gritty of it rather than just joke punchline or joke, joke on top of joke, even joke on top of joke on top of joke and then punchline but there are some genuinely funny moments and I think it's probably one of the most brilliant animal castings since I don't know I Am Legend I love that German Shepherd in I Am Legend I've actually been wanting to see Keanu because just the premise of it I love but the real question is are they self-aware enough in the movie that's the question I have because that that's what makes or breaks these kind of premises premises whether or not they know what they're doing and you can see that in how they're doing it. Well, it's not a meta movie. It's not a movie where... I will say, I also recently watched 21 Jump Street and it was a movie that was so good at subverting the tropes and pointing out all of the ridiculous cliches and things that are kind of staples of action movies of that kind. And I think Keanu had a little bit of that. They kind of scratched at the surface but they barely even like took the paint off it it has some genuinely funny moments i I genuinely like the end i think they there's a pretty good payoff at the end i think they went a, a good direction with it but most of the reviews that i'd read and my own personal experience i do think that it took them a little bit too long to get to where they really wanted to go although i have heard that this is actually the style of comedy that key and peel engage in so it's very possible that i just didn't know what you were getting into? Not just didn't know what I was getting into, but I maybe thought it was going to be a little more snappy, whereas if I was more familiar with their show, uh, going to see the movie might have actually smoothed some of that out for me. Either way, I still want to see it, one way or the other. <laughs> I would recommend it. I do think it's worth watching. I don't think you, you come out of it thinking, oh my god, I just spent an hour and a half. And this has changed my life. It's a religious experience. But like I said, there's there's a few jokes in there that are just they're really worth seeing and it's it's enjoyable it's it's a good way to kill some time it's a fun little movie and that kitten man that kitten is so good <laughs> i i would if there was a sequel that starred just the kitten i would go i'd buy the i'd pre-buy the tickets right now <laughs> that kitten's so badass for my first film i'll also stick with sort of the comedic tone and uh i found this one doing a whole little jump through a couple of movies. Saw a music video for an old movie, Vidoc, starring Gérard Depardieu, and I recognized the name, but I didn't know from where, so I looked up his movie, his entire filmography, and one of them stuck out because it was... Err! Three capital R's, three lowercase R's. I was like, what in the hell is this? That is... That's stupid. So I had to see it. Pardon. En janvier... Préparez-vous à revenir à l'âge de Pierre. Salut Pierre Salut Pierre Salut Pierre Mais vous pouvez prononcer aussi si vous voulez. Bon allez, il faut y aller parce que là, pourquoi je fais ça Came out in 2004 and the premise is murder mystery 
the very first murder mystery because it takes place in prehistoric times. And at the same time, you've also got the war between the dirty hairs and the clean hairs over sh- the secrets of shampoo. Only the clean hairs don't know about this war. It's, it's ridiculous. But at the same time, it's very... It's very constant in its comedy. It is it is great. Everyone I've shown it to has actually adored it. Even the one guy who uh, hates subtitles, because yes, it is in French. But they have so many in-jokes. So does that make the title of the movie, <laughs> The way they pronounce it, actually, right at the very beginning, is just a dinosaur growling. So <laughs> Fair enough. I don't even know how you're supposed to pronounce it. I just go, Err. <laughs> And sound like an idiot. <laughs> That's just the way I roll, I guess. But everything from just the the ridiculousness, the world that they build, and how everyone acts within it, it's always great. It's always on, and I love it. <laughs> I've seen it already about three, four times, because I, I love showing it to people. Everybody adores it. You've recommended it to me on a couple of occasions, and while I'm curious, there's something about the idea that just brightens me a little bit. <laughs> And that's the big turnoff to everybody that I try to th- show this movie. But it everybody be, starts quoting it. It might be bringing <laughs> back memories of Ringo Starr's Caveman, in which case you could possibly see my hesitation. I haven't seen Ringo Starr's Caveman, and obviously it doesn't sound very good based off of the fact that it's scaring you away from this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and the movie was directed by Alain Chabat, for those of you who are interested. And for my second film, I was going to talk about One Hour Photo, which is a 2002 thriller written and directed by Mark Romanek. During business hours, he serves you with a smile. I've watched him grow since he was this big. I almost feel like Uncle Cy. Cy the photo guy. You're a very lucky man, Mr. Jorkin. But after hours, he has you. What you got there, family photos? All to himself. Pretend. This is all pretend. Academy Award winner Robin Williams. Come on! Try! One hour photo. It was recommended to me by a friend, and I've actually often heard that Robin Williams' performance in this movie is exceptional, and that it was definitely worth checking out, based almost entirely on that. Now, Mark Romanek is a music video director. Uh, there's a lot of stuff of his that I've liked. I think he handles visuals quite well so that combined with the Williams performance sort of drew me to it and I have to say that I quite liked it I do think that Williams's performance is the best thing about the movie there's a delicacy to it and there's a a level of threat and danger to it that I think he just really nails and he's kind of creepy as fuck without being too creepy in the way that he's portraying it he's always playing it really on the level and I think that's part of what makes his character seems so kind of dangerous when he's showing up at the kid's soccer game or talking to the mom. I think the only place where this movie maybe fails a little bit or comes in just a little short of really being like a great thriller is the whole secondary cast with Michael Vartan and Connie Nielsen. There's a whole infidelity subplot and they're good, they're serviceable, but I think so much is time so much time is spent on Williams's character that I don't think that other side of it is really kind of fleshed out in such a way where you even really kind of care much about the characters although maybe you're not supposed to because it is all kind of told from Williams's perspective finally I think at the end it's got a it's got an ending I wasn't expecting they actually they catch him they catch him before anything really dastardly happens nobody dies but Romantic still manages to keep the tension up. He still manages to maintain this threat level right to the end and also maintain sympathy for Williams's character right to the end, which I wasn't expecting. And I think the reason why I kind of like this movie as much as I did and the reason why I wanted to talk about today is sort of all of those things. And I know for a fact there's a place in town where I can get the Blu-ray <laughs> for a reasonable price. And it's got uh, some nice features with commentary, and uh, yeah, there's probably worse ways to spend five bucks, so probably going to pick that up this week. Now, I saw One Hour Photo about ten years ago, closer to the time that it actually came out, and the only thing I can remember about it to this day is Robin Williams' performance, and especially the scene with him at the very end after he's caught, and that's the, the scene where they basically make him probably the most sympathetic character in the entire movie. And he just acts the shit out of it. It was at that point, 
I'd never seen Robin Williams do any sort of thing like this whatsoever, so it was entirely out of left field for me. You haven't I'd, seen Insomnia or Goodwill Hunting? At that point, no, I had not. Oh, okay. In fact, I haven't seen either of those to this day, but at One Hour Photo, I haven't. I, all I remember seeing him in was like schlocky kids' movies. I didn't even hear his stand-up until years after that, so I didn't even know... I couldn't fathom this guy being anything other than, like, Peter Pan as an adult sort of deal. But to see him, it, like, it was it was fantastic, and I do want to see it again to see if it... or if to see if it lives up to my memories of it. I kind of get the feeling that, like, I have seen Christopher Nolan's Insomnia, and Robin Williams plays, I guess, kind of a similar role in that. He's the... He's the killer being hunted by Al Pacino and Hilary Swank. And, I mean, I knew Williams could do dramatic acting. I mean, he's had some really good roles. Goodwill Hunting, Dead Poet Society. I mean, he's one of those guys. I do think that a lot of comic actors can really hit drama. Because I think in comedy, there's always that element of tragedy. And I think guys like him... And, you know, I don't care for Will Ferrell's comedy. I don't care for Adam Sandler's comedy. But I love Punch Drunk Love. And I really enjoyed Stranger Than Fiction. Some of these guys can just plumb Jim, those depths. Jim Carrey in uh, the number 21. Jim Carrey, number 23. Number 23. Jim Carrey in the number 23. <laughs> Jim Carrey in Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Like, amazing. And I don't care for Ace Ventura or, you know, a lot of his other comedic roles. That's just kind of not what I find funny. But We should get these serious actors to start doing comedies instead and have the comedic actors do the dramas. But I brought up Insomnia just because it also came out in 2002, so I... I kind of get the feeling that these films... Maybe he was looking for that kind of role. I don't know. It just seems like an interesting little bit of kind of synchronicity that, you know, he's basically playing these two kind of creepy-ass killer guys. Probably getting out of being typecast. It seems to be something a number of comedians do after a while. We should check when Flubber was released. (laughs) See if maybe he was trying to shake Flubber off. (laughs) (laughs) I hear that stuff gets into all the cracks and you just can't wash it out. Old movies I haven't seen since I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so your second movie. And for my second movie, I've got the the more recent movie, uh, He Never Died, released in 2015, directed by Jason Krawczyk, and uh, starring Henry Rollins, and some other people, I suppose. <laughs> hey! Are you Derek? Yeah, motherfucker. How old are you? I have no idea, but I'm in the Bible if that means anything. I'm known as Cain. Probably just gonna go kill another room full of people. You are? Probably. Come on! I'm getting you out of here. I'm going to kill you. I am going to tear you apart and eat you. It's not because I want to. But I have to. What did I tell you? Let me die! When I saw this movie, I was going in blind. It was just something that was on Netflix. I was watching with a buddy, and it said that I'd rate it five stars. And it was actually accurate. Netflix tends to do that, so I, I like to watch these random movies not knowing what's going on when I go in. And I had no idea what was going on for the first half of the movie, but I was... I was fixated. I wanted to I wanted to see what was happening. My buddy watching it with me, normally he falls asleep within half an hour. He was wide awake. He wanted to know what was going on as well. Like there was there was nothing going to stop us. And we were laughing so hard at a lot of this. It is a dark comedy. There's nothing in it that's necessarily a joke, but the way Henry Rollins reacts to everything, he just gives zero shits about anything whatsoever. And when you get the whole reveal, which was actually a Apparently revealed in the trailer that uh, you showed me, Mike, that he's actually Kane. Actually, you know what? Cut that out. When you get the reveal <laughs> that's in the trailer that I recommend you do not see before seeing the movie, it all makes sense, and just the way he acts, it it works perfectly well. You know he's an immortal really early on, and I could see that that kind of life would just drive you to this complete not caring attitude, and it's it's done so perfectly. And in contrast to all these other ones where immortals care or do all sorts of other dumb crap, especially if you're used to playing a bunch of like JRPGs where the immortal's goal is to kill himself off by destroying the world or some other dumb BS like that, the way he doesn't care about anything, people come in 
kick open his door and he's like, what do you guys want? Does not care. And it is glorious. And I loved it. (laughs) I saw the trailer for this shortly before it kind of had its limited release. I really wanted to see it. I guess it did hit town and I just missed it. And I guess Rollins was even here for the premiere and I missed it. But uh, I knew somebody who did go and uh, they said it was fabulous. Rollins, oddly enough, who is a completely animated and interesting character, as soon as you put a camera in front of him, he turns into like a statue. <laughs> and he looks like he's under your thrall or something. It's, it's pretty bizarre. But yeah, I really wanted to see the movie. And then I saw it on Netflix and I got super excited. I still haven't gotten around to watching it, but hearing you know you raving about it and a few other people I know who've seen it, who just think it's great, like... I'm almost kind of savoring it. I'm almost sort of setting it aside for, you know, that day when I just desperately need something that's going to be awesome, and then I'll hit Netflix and do it. And hopefully we haven't gotten your expectations too high. (laughs) Because expectations can make or break a movie. You go into a movie expecting... You go... You go into Grown Ups expecting Citizen Kane, you're going to be disappointed. You go into Grown Ups expecting bad hackneyed comedy and some stupid jokes about tits, and guess what? You're going to get what you want, and you're going to be happy when you come out. (laughs) Which is kind of, you know, the the trailer for Keanu, just to get back to Keanu briefly, that it came off as a lot more action-y, as as there was going to be a lot more running around, a lot more hijinks, a lot more cat, a lot more Keanu. (laughs) <laughs> I think also part of what got me excited is I heard that Keanu Reeves was actually going to provide a voice for the cat and uh, I was kind of curious how that was going to play out I think it actually was was done quite well especially since it was done uh, in post they they weren't actually going to use Keanu and then Keanu heard about the film and he's like you have to get me on this movie <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was great but yeah like the, it's one of those situations where you, you watch the trailer you think this is going to be great and then it's a little bit different than the trailer or a lot different than the trailer so all I know is they sold me on Cat Taken Hostage and we've got to go save him I've seen so many action movies where somebody takes somebody's possession they take their girlfriend daughter wife always a girl too like they just it seems like something where they know what they're doing and they're lampshading it and that's what's got me excited about the movie I think what saves Keanu is there's there's genuinely a couple of really good kind of twists on the genre where they could very easily go in one direction, but they choose to go another direction. But like I said, the, the few times where they do subvert the genre, it, it kind of saved it for me, I guess. So. so to summarize our recommendations here, I would certainly recommend He Never Died to anyone who likes a bit more of a subtle, dark comedy. Or breathes oxygen. Or breathes oxygen. Or who understands subtlety and doesn't need stuff to be thrown into their face. And Er, I would recommend to anyone who likes to laugh. It is it is a good movie. There are so many little jokes hidden in it, in the little things that they do. A lot of small references... It is constant, and it is constantly on. And you never feel like anything is too played out. I can't recommend the movie enough. Even though both of them were rated fairly average, according to the little bit of research I did here, I think that people just don't know what good is sometimes, and it's sad. Of course, comedies are often poorly received, I find. This is true, which makes me feel bad about how hard I was on Keanu earlier. (laughs) (laughs) Although it is definitely a recommendation. I think if you haven't seen Keanu, it's uh, it's a great way to spend uh, an hour and a half. I was also very pleased with One Hour Photo. It's a really solid thriller. And again, just for watching Robin Williams' performance alone, definitely worth it. It's visually interesting. A lot of stuff going on. It's, it's definitely uh, something to watch for people who like to have the, the fleshy bits of their, their insides poked around a little bit. All right, so that's a wrap on what is ostensibly our first of these special presentation episodes where we just ramble on about films that we've liked. Or disliked. We'll get into that at some point. Feel free to come by to our Libsyn page and comment. If you get this on iTunes, rate and review. That's how we get more notice and how more people enjoy the show and start up the discussion anywhere you can. If you go to our websites, we have all the information there. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter at FYC Show. We're on all the social media. We're not hard to find. So we hope you enjoyed the show. And we hope you enjoy these movies that we recommend. We'd be curious to know what you think. So until next time. I'm Mike. And I'm Dustin. Ta-ta. Take care.